Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today, I'm going to show you how to open a folder from your Access database. But more specifically, we're going to set up folders for each of our clients. And that way, you can click one button. It'll open up their folder. And you can drop whatever files and other things you want that are related to that client in that folder. Today's question comes from Julian in Hoboken, New Jersey, one of my Platinum members. Julian says, I know you're completely against storing files inside the database as attachments. Yes, I am very much so. So we're using a folder on the server for each client. How can I add a button in my Access Database's customer form to quickly open a folder that's specific to each client? It would be super helpful if I could just click a button on the customer form to open a folder without having to search for it every time. Is there an easy way to do this? Well, of course there is. Let's see how to do it. Before we get started, though, this is a developer level class. What does that mean? Well, that means you're going to have to know some VBA. And if you don't know any VBA, go watch this video first. It's about 20 minutes long. It'll teach you everything you need to know to get started. Go watch this video on variables. And go watch this video on if then statements. These are all free videos. They're on my website. They're on my YouTube channel. Go watch those and then come on back. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do is set up a folder that we're gonna pretend is my database folder. Because normally I just run these databases for the videos off my desktop. But we'll just make a folder here real quick. New folder, and we'll call this uh, my database or whatever. Whatever you wanna call it. This'll be your server folder, right? All right, and in here I'll drop my database, which I'm gonna grab a copy of my Tech Help free template. There it is. Okay, now inside of this, wherever your server folder happens to be, if you got a split database going on, this will be your backend database file, right? But in here, I'm going to also create another folder. We'll call it client files. Okay, so this is where my folder is. Okay, see users, Amicron, OneDrive, whatever on my machine. On your machine, it might be different. It might be a Z drive or whatever. I'm gonna copy that to my clipboard. In fact, let's do one further here. Let's go into the client files. Let's copy this whole thing to the clipboard. That's where your files are gonna be. Now under client files, we'll have a folder for each customer, okay? You'll have to make these for now, but we'll talk about this again in a few minutes. So let's say it's based on their customer ID, right? So another folder, we'll make one for customer one. We'll make another new folder for customer two. We'll just do those two for now, okay? So I got this whole thing, database file, client files, and then one is where customer one's stuff will be. Okay, all right, let's go back and open up the database now. Okay, so in here in the customer form, let's go to design view. Let's make a new button. So form design, grab a button, drop it over here, cancel the wizard, right? And then we'll make this the open client folder button, all right? Resize it, make it look pretty, however you want, okay. Give it a good name so Alex doesn't yell at us. Open folder, button, BTN. And then right click, build event. That'll open up the code builder. Mine's way over there. Let me resize it. There we go. Okay, so in here, I'm going to dim a variable called file path. That'll be a string. I'm going to set file path equals that thing that I just put in my clipboard. Okay, and we're going to put a slash on the end of that. And then after that, we're gonna add the customer ID that's on the current form, right? Because we're on the customer form, so I can use the customer ID. Okay, so that's my file path. That's the folder that I wanna open. Let's take a look at it. Message box, file path. Just wanna see what it is at this point. Save it, and then open her up. Let's close this, and hit the button. Okay, and that's what it looks like. See, users, Amicron, OneDrive, da, da, da. Client files one. Okay, I'm gonna put another trailing slash at the end of that too, just so it's no question it's a folder. Okay, so now that we've got that file path all set, and again, this could be your server, wherever you've got on the network that you're putting your files, right up to your, your database folder. Okay, now to open that folder, we're going to use the shell command. You can use the shell command to open up other programs, right? You could say shell notepad.exe, right? And if it's not a, if it's not an application that's in your system's path where it knows to find it, just put the full path in there. 
C colon backslash Windows, whatever. The one that we're looking for is explorer.exe. Explorer is your file explorer. That's what Windows uses when you open up the, the folder to browse around, right? This guy, this is the file explorer. Okay, and this is explorer.exe. So I wanna open up explorer.exe, but I wanna open it with a parameter. I wanna open it to the file path. Okay, now one more thing you need here is the window style. The default is minimized, I believe, right? Let me see if I can get that out of the way here. I'm pretty sure it's minimized. Let's see, comma. Yeah, minimized focus is the is the default. You don't want that, otherwise it'll be on your, your taskbar minimized. So you want normal focus. That means it's gonna put it up in your face in a normal window, right? And then save it. And let's go back over here and hit the button. And there it is, look at that. It opened it up to my database client files, the one folder, see that? Let's go to the next customer, right? Customer ID two, open her up. And now we're in folder two. Now what happens if we try to open up folder three? Okay, see now it's, now it's in Richard personal documents. If it can't find that folder, it's gonna open it up to your documents folder, wherever your documents folder happens to be. So it'd be nice if we could figure out if that folder exists and if not, create it. And we can do that with a little magic, something called the dir function, it stands for directory, check to see if it exists. And it looks like this, if dir file path, comma, VB directory. In other words, we're looking for a directory. Okay, now if you say dir, that folder, comma, VB directory, if that exists, it'll return the name of the directory. If not, it'll return an empty string, okay? So if it's an empty string, then we're gonna create it, right? Folder doesn't exist, create it. And we can create a folder with the make dir command. We're just gonna say make dir file path. Now, this assumes that the parent folder exists or you won't be able to make it. All right, I'll just throw an error. Okay, and then end if. So now we're checking to see if that folder exists. If not, we're gonna create it. And then when we're all done, either way, we're gonna open that folder up. Save it. Let's come back here and hit the button. And boom, I'm in folder three. It didn't find it and it created it for me. All right, let's go to another one. Let's go to... Go to Reginald Barkley, customer nine. Go to this folder. Boom, client file, client folder nine. And if you go up to client files, you'll see there's one, two, three, and nine. So it'll create them as it needs them. See that? Not that hard. What was that? Was like uh, what? Uh, one, two, three, four, five lines of code. Now these are all called file I/O functions. Directory, make directory, even shell. I I covered this in my uh, my my developer file classes. I've got several classes on this topic, starting with developer 30, right? Classic VB file input output, reading and writing text files. Developer 31 is file and folder navigation, copying files, compacting your access database backend files automatically. That's pretty cool. And lots more stuff. I got several other lessons all on file input and output, working with files and folders, doing all kinds of crazy stuff. So if you like that kind of thing, check it out. I'll put links down below. But that is gonna be your tech help video for today. Tomorrow, I'm gonna to teach you to figure out if that folder's already open. Because right now, if you open the folder, and let's say you minimize it or move it out of the way, hit the button again, it's gonna open up another copy, and then another copy, and then another copy. So tomorrow, I'm gonna to teach you to say, hey, if that folder's already open, just switch to it, instead of opening up another copy of it. But that's gonna do it for today, folks. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you tomorrow. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. 
Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus you get access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject and you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by accesslearningzone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.